Welcome to the next installment of the Train Vicar. When I made the last video, I thought it might be handy for people to have a summary of New Zealand's railway history. Now, there are a few of those videos around and there are many books and so on, but I thought maybe I could help with that. Then, in addition, I will have recently been doing a course on the this book, the Bible. And uh, as you go through the Bible, you realize that a lot of it is not inspiring quotes, but a lot of the content of the Bible is history. So if the Bible is so interested in history, maybe as in a comparison, I could also do a history on New Zealand's railways. But then I thought, oh, that might be a bit complicated and, and uh, might be, I need might need to go to, into too much detail. So I thought, well, I'll do it a little bit about the history of New Zealand railways, but probably more about passenger trains at this stage. And, well, not that long ago, a book has been published by Andre Brett about New Zealand's passenger rail since 1920. And some people refer to that as the Bible because it's very thorough. It uh, details uh, how passenger rails have the services have developed in New Zealand. With lots of nice and handy maps in there as well. So that's what I'll do for, uh, for the next few installments. But in this first video, I'll actually won't use this book too much because I'll look at the period before 1920. That means from 1863 to 1920. How uh, did passenger rail develop in New Zealand at that time? The first mechanically powered railway in New Zealand was the railway between Ferrymead and Christchurch. This was uh, this railway line was built uh, under contract to the Canterbury Provincial Government. It was built in the Irish Broad Gauge because uh, locomotives were available at that stage in Australia uh, for that gauge. Now, as you can see, uh, passenger services were quite important for that railway as well. They had passenger carriages and as the Canterbury broad gauge network expanded, passenger rail was always quite important. Well, in 1870, the central government of New Zealand took over the planning, construction and later financing of uh, railways in New Zealand from the provinces. Now, all railways had to be built to the new standard gauge, or the, it was a narrow gauge of three foot six inches, that's 1067 millimeters. Railways were built all across New Zealand, often more for local interests rather than as a national network. As you can imagine, a lot of lobbying went on to have a railway built locally. Normally, passenger trains were always part of those railways once they opened, a very important part of getting around. Nevertheless, most railway lines initially they are focused towards bringing produce to the port. Still, in 1878, for example, the railway line between Christchurch and Dunedin opened, and at that time, express trains were then operating between Christchurch and Dunedin. Some of the lines were built over quite mountainous terrain, for example, the Rimotaka Incline between the Wairarapa, which is to the east of Wellington. However, when the government did not build lines that local business wanted to have, in a few cases they tried to do it themselves. And so, for example, the most successful private railway company in New Zealand was born. It was the Wellington and Manawatu Railway Company, which ran between Wellington and Longburn and near Palmerston North. This was set up because the government didn't want to have a competing railway line to the railway line through the Wairarapa. The company was registered on 23rd of August 1881. Work commenced in September 1882 and the full line was opened in November 1886. The uh, Wellington and Guanajuato railway line used uh, American roll rolling stock, particularly its carriages, but then later on also its locomotives. They were the most luxurious uh, carriages in New Zealand at the time and some of the most powerful locomotives as well. The company was quite successful because it uh, had uh, been given some land around the railway corridor by the government and it ran really successful operations, fast, speedy trains, comfortable 
and uh, well designed. In 1908, it was taken over by the government to form the North Island main trunk from Auckland to Wellington. Another private company was the New Zealand Midland Railway Company, which wanted to build a railway line between Canterbury via the West Coast to the Nelson region. Well, construction started in 1887, but the company soon ran into trouble and didn't complete much of the proposed route. So eventually the government took over and constructed the line between Canterbury and the West Coast through the Oteira Tunnel. Travelling by train became the way to travel at that time. Railway stations were quite busy, and even though there were often only a few trains a day, uh, the railway stations were the centre of activity in many cities and towns. You can see the crowds here in Onehunga, or in this picture in Te Avamutu. People came from far and near with their horse and cart to catch a train or collect somebody from the train at the railway station. Trains often departed in many different directions from a railway station. So this here is Timaru when there was not just one up train up and down, but uh, trains going to many different places. Or this is in Lower Hutt. As you can see, the railway station was quite a busy place and the train already quite long long distance trains uh, such as this one in Taihape uh, from Wellington to Auckland were also part of the scene. This poster from 1889 advertises railway tours throughout New Zealand, uh, stopping over at the main attractions. Now you couldn't get to all the attractions by train, but you could cover the major distances by train to get to those um, attractions and then catch uh, local transport from there. Well, remember the Wellington and Manawatu Railway Company? This uh, early film from 1901 shows crowds at their Longburn station about to go to the train to Wellington. As you can see, there were crowds. Railways were the way to move lots of people in New Zealand. They were the way to travel in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Mm -hmm.